So I've already been introduced, so I'm not going to say much else yet, but I should, I guess, clearly state. I'm Jakub Pracek, I'm a software engineer with Red Hat, and this is my presentation. So mm, the idea is this, to talk why I've made up, why I've written it, what it is, what is its purpose, what it actually is, and uh, the main part that we want to get to uh, is uh, how can I leverage this for myself, my organization, my project. You know, the idea behind the presentation is that I guess it's mostly uh, red headers in the in the in the room, and um, obviously this is a way to share what I've been working on and hopefully get to that. You know. How can someone else use it? Is, is this something that's, that is useful to me that, uh, that I can benefit from? So why? Uh, that's a bit, big fat disclaimer. I'm part of continuous kernel integration team and we provide a service to test kernels for kernel maintainers and developers. Uh, so how, how did this project began? Well, we wanted to scale to target different providers, different clouds like AVS, uh, Beaker, per perhaps others, and uh, to, to run kernel, kernel testing in there. And obviously no one project will do that all for you. Also, the idea is to target some, some labs with specific hardware to, to, to SSH. So we also needed to run kernel testing, and yes, Apt has a, like a, a part of it is a test runner, uh, mostly for kernel testing. But you can you can run like generic uh, work, uh, workflows or commands, shell commands, um, whatever you want. Uh, also, we needed to generate results and have CI compatible output. There's something called KCIDB. That's a big separate topic, but, uh, you know, there are different kernel uh, CI systems in the world and uh, KCIDB is something that uh, provides, uh, that, that standardizes the output and there are multiple people, multiple companies, multiple projects contributing that data to it for kernel testing. A lot of dimension scaling. Uh, we kind of wanted to handle our transitioning and legacy a little bit because, well, we use Beaker quite a lot still. And, uh, you know, that legacy workflow that people have, it's not going to uh, disappear at the wave of magic hand. People have their scripts, ways, you know, the way they work. And obviously, the idea was to kind of offer some helping hand in there. Uh, also, the idea was to uh, kind of try to avoid creating new standards, more on that later. And the idea, idea was to be reliable mm, with kernel testing, because if you're doing something non-standard non with the machine in hopes of breaking it, then you want to be able to get the results out reliably. To that end, the test runner uses restraint, which has been quite uh, reliable. So what is up? What, it actually is the project. Well, it's a GitLab repo, and that's actually the only link I have in the presentation. So, if you want to you, if you want to note it down, please do. This is also like for me at least as a, the maintainer primary primary way to interact, you know, to an issue or like a command on a PR or something. So, up this, it's a bit of Python three code, and it has uh, parts for provisioning uh, to uh, provision machines in Beaker, in a AVS to some limited capacity, and with one minute tip, uh, which is very fast. It's a tool that mm, can get you a VM in about a minute, and you can run some, some simple uh, uh, workloads or uh, one shot kernel tests on there. Hopefully, more coming soon. And the provisioning, it's mostly synchronous. Uh, synchronous. This kind of comes down from 
that requirement for kernel testing where, well, if you have a one piece of very specific hardware that you want to get, then there are some chances that you will not be able to get it. If, for example, something breaks down physically, then you know that that's an issue, and you know you wait for that resource, you might not get it. It's not AVS, it's not VM. Uh, if if you're uh, targeting some very specific hardware, then uh, then there might be some some issues. So the second part of opt is a test runner that I mentioned for kernel that can run tests on any of the above. So what is provisioning? Well, in, in apt, it's, uh, it looks like this. You run a very simple command. That's the actual command that the idea was to, to keep it really simple. And it will create the printout some outputs that it's you know, provisioning resources and that it was able to provision that successfully. Uh, so you run the command, command, you wait for a bit, you get the resource. Now you have a resource you can SSH into. That's the that's the important part for restraint and running kernel tests in there, or you know, running some other workflow uh, workloads in there. So, but what does update? You know, uh, the the command. It's uh, there could be a couple of more like uh, command line options, but it's yeah, it's actually like supposed to be like this this simple to get that repeatable workflow. So, but how do I tell it uh, what to provision and what, what what to do? Well, there's an XML file that's mostly for Beaker for a legacy workflow, but it supports that like fully, uh, and there's a YAML file for, well, either Beaker or uh, other provisioners. And you can both, uh, both can be sort of edited by hand. It's uh, not 100% user-friendly. It's easier with the YAML, uh, but it can be done. And I'm actually going to do demo just after I show you what the YAML file looks like. So it you know latches onto some beaker com concepts so we don't create that ex extra standard. You organize your resources to recipe sets and host, uh, hosts. For example, here I have one minute tip uh, provisioner which I mentioned. I will get a single host with some rel8 distro. And that's basically it. In this case, I, I already have that resource. I have its host name or its IP. I have its recipe ID, so I can target it. I can run uh, test workloads in there using restraint. If you're not going to run tests or workloads, then this part is going to be empty. But here you can see the, the ID and distribution command, which is uh, again for, for restraint to run exit one command in the in this in this VM that I got from one minute tip. So that's it for the YAML file. This is roughly how it looks like. Uh, for the XML for Beaker, well it's a little bit more, bit more complicated, but since this is legacy I will not go into too much detail. But again you have some ways of describing what you want. In this case, I want to disturb that's Fedora 33 and that's x86 uh, architecture. So it's rather late, as I said, I mean, you can mostly edit it by hand. This is what you provide to opt as an input so you can provision and do other stuff. So a demo. Uh, I said I can get a VM in one minute using this nice provisioner someone else someone else made. So I will run this command. As I said, it's pretty simple. Hopefully you can see it up here. And yeah, it will take about a minute. So I will just move on my slide, the presentation. And meanwhile, I can talk about how the wrappers for the provisioning could like. Well, there is a interface in Python that 
all the provisioners need to implement. It's a couple of abstract methods. If you implement those, then you have this, this wrapper for your provisioner and you can you know, repeatedly uh, do the same things to get that resource, run some tests. Um, right, so yeah, still waiting on this, but let's say it won't take more than a minute. Meanwhile, I can talk about what is a test runner. Well, with up, it looks like this. You again run a simple command and it will tell you, well, that it started, that the results for the machine will land in a specific directory and it will show you as it's running restraint what parameters are passing to that. Below, you can actually see the commands running and failing in this case on a specific host. And it will say, you know, uh, it, it will um, it will say what the result is. It will give you kind of a high level of human readable summary. Again, disclaimer: this is kind of meant for for us to for kernel testing to have a simple and to express it like a description of what what happened. Also, as I mentioned, it creates KCIDB oh, uh, dump files, and uh, I can show them really quickly in the in the meantime. And they they look something like this. As I said, this is this is for kernel testing. So yeah, it took two minutes, uh, two minutes, and now I can, as I said, I can run tests on that. Oops, sorry, didn't specify like. Yeah, the idea the, the, is this: that there, are, as I said, there are a couple of parameters depending on, on what you're doing, but. The, it's the same as I shown in my presentation. It just has some some more colors using the resource running tests. Right, back to the presentation. So, what is the summary of what up this? Well, it's a couple of provisioners wrappers for Beaker AVS one minute tip. Uh, it has a test runner uh, that uses restraint for kernel testing or other workflow uh, workloads. Um, it has the capacity to do incremental test results. It is CI compatible with uh, through, through KCIDB. Uh, it has a pretty well codified uh, rules for evaluating results. It can rerun tests on specific conditions. For example, when, the, the, uh, when there's an infrastructure issue, uh, like network not being access accessible, the, the machine being broke, broken somehow. And uh, yeah, uh, fast prototyping with the one minute tape, 100 use, uh, unit test coverage for the project. Okay, so so it's a little rough, maybe a, a little alpha in some ways, but uh, you know, it's not one of those projects that simply break down at the drop of the hat. So uh, the, the, the main part of this, how, how can I leverage this? Well, uh, if you're here and you're listening, then hopefully you're someone who can, who would want to, you know, ta target different provisioners, different providers to this wrapper. It would be really nice to have one way to say, I want this resource. You know, I want a machine with this many gigabytes of RAM from, you know, from AVS, from Azure, from whomever. It, uh, can also be useful to you if uh, you want to tar target resources to run some tests or workflow, uh, workloads. Uh, it can be very useful to you if you want to get or send re uh, results from, from a lab. You have some kind of special piece of hardware that is somehow isolated, perhaps only uh, accessible to network SSH or something and can be useful to you if you want a simple repeatable workflow 
also it's useful for kernel testing. Uh, so how will it continue? Well, what's going to happen with the project? Well, it, we have something called data warehouse that's going to soon be populated with this for our kernel uh, developers and maintainers to have easier access to those test results through like a very nice uh, UI interface. That's the KCIDB part where we standardize on KCIDB and then people can you know, create their own dashboards uh, or reports, whatever they want to use. Uh, so there's some chance of like um, the, the missing part that is in uh, that is missing in apt is translating hardware requirements into provi provision or specific terms, you know, saying uh, in a sim simpler way, I want, you know, this, this kind of resource, I want this many gigabytes of RAM, this kind of storage, this kind of hardware. It is possible to do as I showed you in the XML and YAML file, but it's not very user friendly, and there's you obviously like ways to make it better. Uh, there might be, you know, some attempts like at transition layers because we've seen this this kind of problem in the world where a uh, certain group of people uses, uh, for example, something like Beaker to, for you know uh, provisioning for for running tests for. Uh, for hardware, um, I, uh, for hardware inventory, and uh, someone else uses like Lava, and you cannot like you know send your beaker uh, your beaker workflow workload to to Lava or vice versa, right? But there to to this there might be some some ways to to do that actually. So other than that, I hope to have like better. Uh, documentation, better community traction, and maybe some improvements to what happens when you want to rerun a test, uh, like uh, on a different box or under different conditions. So now it's uh, the part, this is the end of my presentation. Here is some space for questions and answers. And you know, you can ask any question, uh, whether to something related to this, or, you know, if you just, uh, just want to, for me to clear up something I said, because I'm speaking quite, quite fast. And if there was anything you didn't understand, understand and want to clear up, then you can ask. Uh, thank you, Jakub. Uh, actually, I, I think I would be the one who will ask questions in, uh, since I provision uh, machines on AWS quite regularly. And I have Ansible playbooks for it. And I try to catch if I should go instead with a uh, your provisioner, but I'm not sure like um, what is the benefit for me, or if there is any benefit for me there if I have Ansible play, which I can, as you said, I can rerun it many, many times. Uh, right. I, I don't think. Uh that there's a benefit for you in this specific case, because with AVS, you set up everything first, you know, through those playbooks or God, hope not manually in, in the interface, and then you do something with it. While with Beaker, it's kind of vice versa, but we still kind of needed to unify like both. So I, I don't think there would be too big of a benefit for you there. Okay, it, it just, uh, you mentioned AWS case and uh, I thought- Yes, currently like it has a very simple setup. So, so you get, you can get a couple of uh, AVS machines that are uh, easily accessible. It's, it's like for uh, someone, I'd say it, it would be for some, currently it would be for someone who doesn't know AVS wants to try it out somehow to be able to access that. So there's a like a, I'd say a setup code that that prepares something basic for you can can get you any uh, amount of machines with with the uh, with the parameters you provide. You basically specify an instance, but obviously it cannot 
know how we want to set up network between your machines and etc. That's why you have playbooks and such. Okay, thanks. Um, I don't see any other questions. Ah, no, actually there is one uh, from uh, Peter Splihal. Do you see any opportunities to integrate up to this uh, team T? Uh, I do. Uh, I definitely do. Uh, to answer this very explicitly, I, uh, you know, since since quite quite long time, I I saw that as an opportunity, but uh, basically I haven't gotten to that. Maybe that was because I'm uh, lazy or focused on something else. But yes, I do see some potential there, uh, either to uh, use TMT in some way or provide provide that test runner for for, for restraint to TMT uh, because it it's quite a bit of work to to uh, handle like restraint if you want some some extra features like the, the incremental test results etc. So uh, yes, I I do. Okay, it seems like uh, Peter should open a uh, request on the up to project. <laughs> 